I am so pleased to be able to introduce my good friend Steve Farrell. Steve is the head of Humanities Team, and uh, he has a heart that is so big and full and caring. And um, I, a Humanities Team uh, has over 650,000 members in over 150 countries around the world. Steve will probably give us more information about that, and he'll certainly tell us some of the wonderful things that they do, like holding Global Oneness Day. You know, many of you may have participated in that and other things. So Steve and I are working right now on uh, an evolutionary leaders, well, normally we would call it a, a retreat, but now we're calling it an advance. So we're members of the evolutionary leaders group, and we are um, having this next month in Colorado. Steve has the, and where we both live, Steve has the most inspiring story of how he came to Colorado because he was an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, and he was the head of, of two wonderful companies that he founded. And then he had a calling, and that calling took him to Colorado and to eventually founding Humanities Team. It's a wonderful story, and Steve's become this amazing world server. And now, I want to welcome Steve with all the well, thank you, Olivia. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I want to thank you and Helena, Sheldon, who uh, helped me get set up here to be here with you for this program. I've been really looking forward to it. And uh, your name, 33rd International Conference, Forerunner of Light, Illuminating and Manifesting the Divine Plan. <laughs> so first, uh, congratulations on 33 years, because that's going back a ways. And I'm sure when you were founded, you had people looking at you cross-eyed. <laughs> Maybe you still do. I don't know. But uh, we, <laughs> we, we couldn't be more aligned, let me say. Um, I'm going to tell you about Humanities Team. If there's time at the end, I'll tell you that, that personal story. I'm not sure if there's going to be time to do that or not. But we are absolutely uh, completely aligned. And what are sometimes referred to as esoteric teaching. <laughs> Not anymore. Like we're, this is ultimate reality. So we're bringing it into the mainstream. I know that's what you're doing. Uh, and that's what I'm doing as well. So um, well, let's get started here. I'm going to just share screen so you can see some slides that I've created here. All righty. And um, let's just uh, go to this uh, first slide. So this is what uh, describes the work we're doing in Humanities Team. Humanities Team is an international spiritual movement whose purpose is to communicate and demonstrate the timeless truth that we are all one with the divine and all of life, caring for each other and the world we share so that people's actions reflect this profound understanding within a generation. We believe that living this truth is essential to solving the most chronic and acute problem, world problems, and vital to creating a sustainable world of peace, harmony, and happiness. And, and a couple of things I'll draw attention to in here. One is uh, the beginning, that uh, sharing uh, this timeless truth that we are all one. As you know, it's an ancient truth. I'm going to review some of that in this presentation. Uh, but it's a, it's a truth that hasn't been spoken much, and it's been marginalized. The other important part of this is the second part that talks about living into the unity of all of life, caring for each other in the world we share. So it's about awakening our oneness with the divine each other and all of life, and then bringing that fully into all the spheres of life. Uh, that's, that's what we're about here in the humanities team. So I'll tell you just uh, a little bit about our launch. And uh, it was in June, 2003. So we're 16 years old. We were launched in uh, Wilsonville, Oregon. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh is, was our founder. I did help him, uh, help him launch Humanities Team. If you've read any of his Conversations with God books, then now there were 10. One of the books is Tomorrow's God. And in Tomorrow's God, 
you can actually read about the whole birth of humanities team. That's right in the conversation of uh, form humanities team. And it's going to do this and this and this. Uh, so we've tried to live up to that. Uh, Neil had a little planning session at his home in the spring of 2003. I was there with about 20 others. And, and I was the one that emerged that uh, really felt this was my calling. So I helped him launch it in Wilsonville. And then um, a few months later, he asked me to kind of step into this, uh, into this worldwide executive uh, uh, function, um, which is quite different, you know, as you know, within your own organization, uh, because we're all in this being state of oneness. And so we work together in a very uh, unique way. I, what we refer to ourselves is as a unity team. Uh, we just work together in beautiful unity, which is what the movement is all about anyway. So um, I want to just share that um, this isn't, of course, about like changing the world uh, to become one, right? We're not, we're not uh, trying to become one. We already are all one. That's the whole point. We are all one. And when we leave our bodies, as the, all of the wisdom shares, when we're not in bodies, then we, we know we're one and we speak from the one. And it's all that we feel is love and grace and peace and blessing, etc. It's what the afterlife is. But it's hard here on the earth because most of us are not born into mystical homes like that. Most of us are born to understand, no, I'm Steve Farrell. I'm in this body until it drops. And, and then who knows what happens to it. Uh, but, uh, you know, as it turns out, ultimate reality is not that, right? Uh, ultimate reality is that we actually are all one. So the divine is, is within me, just as she's in, within you and each person and each animal and the earth itself and the cosmos. So, uh, and of course, that, there, there are huge implications for this. Right. If we're already all one and the divine is within me, uh, then what I'm calling intuition or creativity or lots of things, it's actually I have divine presence that's actually right there. That's bringing uh, inspirations and vision and plans and all kinds of things into my life, just as she is bringing those uh, that creativity into your life. So we are uh, a nonprofit. Uh, we're a 2019 uh, and have been for a while top rated uh, great nonprofit. We're also a gold level uh, guide star nonprofit. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, 16 years old. We're uh, either a volunteer organization still at 16 years old or lightly paid. We've got mission critical people in the organization that really have to have income and they're mission critical. They're, they're heads down every day. Uh, so, we're in the process of becoming first sustainable where people are making market wages and then what I'll call flourishing, where we have budget to be doing really cool things all over the world. Uh, so that's what we're working toward. But today we're, uh, I myself, I'm a volunteer, even here in my 16th year and others are too. Okay, so we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about oneness here. Um, because that's really central to this, to what uh, our work is about. And you're familiar with this quote, I'm sure, from Albert Einstein. Uh, this is actually a partial quote, so I didn't, we didn't want to take up the whole screen. I'm going to read you the rest of this quote, but it's that a human being is part of a, of a whole called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself his thoughts and his feelings as something separated from the rest. And then it goes on to say a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Now, is there any more beautiful quote about oneness than that? <laughs> in terms of describing what the problem is, this whole separation uh, belief system, and then bringing right in the solution of how, what we're gonna do about it, that we all perceive we're separate. And that's behind this whole American dream thing, right? Where, we're here for 
uh, 100 years if we're lucky, and we're going to go for this material success in the hugest way and sort of Darwin-like, bring that treasure back to our family and sort of put up moats. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, that's an optical delusion. <laughs> and so our invitation is to, is to uh, see beyond that and to become what, what is described here so beautifully by Einstein. Now, the second quote I want to bring in real quick, since we've got him on the screen, is another quote you're, I'm sure, familiar with, that no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. So uh, uh, this, of course, is getting into, so as we understand uh, oneness, then it means that we've got to come in, that, that the solution, the way that we're going to live it, and the way that it's going to spread uh, and conscious evolution, the journey of conscious evolution, is not going to be through the same means as separation, right? And, and I think what it's really getting at is that uh, consciousness will spread because its basis is the inner. And we'll be talking a lot more about that. And I know that's what your group is about too. Its basis is the inner. We're actually emanations of the divine, of, of God, of presence, of light, of love, of universe, of cosmos. So, uh, and when we come from that basis, uh, then, and, and, our, uh, and our, our collaboration, our discussion, our living, our participation in a group like yours, our participation in any group where it's coming from that basis of the sacred is a completely different uh, basis than the Western in my head, uh, uh, all of it uh, scribbled out in terms of how it's going to work, this whole mental framework and schedule. It's a completely different way of operating. Okay, to bring in just uh, some more uh, quotes here. Erwin Schrodinger, you're probably familiar with him too, Nobel Prize winner, 1933, so 86 years ago. And uh, he says, quantum physics thus reveals a basic oneness of the universe. Now, and this was not a casual quote. Maybe you've done this, uh, but if you Google Erwin Schrodinger and read what his life was about, it was uh, near the end of his life, this was a huge focus for him. So it wasn't a casual thing that he was sharing at all. Then Ken Welber, of course, who's right here in Denver, preeminent philosopher uh, with his term holon. The human being is a holon, simultaneously whole and part of a larger whole. But most of us, most of humanity is unaware that it's part of a larger whole. This is this whole oneness thing where the, in the separation uh, worldview that there's not the sense that I'm, I'm a part of some body here on earth, a part of humanity that's a body, a part of the earth that's a body, of the cosmos that's a body. And that, that is where the problem comes in. So, and of course, sacred text has a lot to say about oneness, and I'm sure you've seen uh, so many of the quotes here as well. Uh, the sutras, the Bible, the Quran, the Talmud, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, a lot to say. If you Google these and read what's said, you, you wonder, now, how can it be? How can it be that here in, in, in 2019, uh, there's so little awareness of oneness? Actually, it's growing, isn't it? Because in, the, in recent months and recent years, it's really growing. I'm seeing there's more and more discussion that everything is interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent, that everything is an emanation of one thing. So it's growing, uh, especially in the last few years. But uh, to the extent that this Wisdom has been around this long when we talk about Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads, my God. Uh, but it's, it's not wisdom that's understood by the masses. Also, this uh, book here called Great Principles Shared by All Religions. It's oneness. Great Principles Shared by All Religions, a really cool little book that pulls these oneness quotes out of uh, sacred text all over the place. One of the uh, quotes here in the Bible and there are many, and, and I'm sure you've, you've seen them, but so one of them is, uh, this is uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. It says, and the Lord said, behold, the people are one, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So that's actually more than just about we're all one. That's also bringing in this whole that there's no this limiting belief thing that's it's not real, 
right? Which is another piece of this. So to the, if, if, we're, if we're an emanation of the one, if we're a wave uh, to the ocean and the ocean is the divine, uh, the cosmos, the one mind, then um, that's saying all the properties of the ocean are ours, right? Eternal life, uh, infinite possibility, uh, that, that anything is, is, can be real if we imagine it so. Now, um, these movies, you're probably familiar with some of them, maybe all of them. Uh, and uh, Avatar, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, Dark Crystal. Uh, I've watched with my kids. I've watched some of these so many times. Um, Lion King, Pay It Forward, Ice Age. So uh, the common thread, of course, in these movies is that everything's interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent oneness. So uh, in Lion King, you know, he lives in me right? It couldn't be any, he lives in me. Uh, and just also a lot of what unfolds in that movie where uh, uh, Mufasa is dead and his son has become irresponsible uh, and his son uh, goes off in, in this, what's called a Hakuna Patata, right? So, which is irresponsibility. I'm just going to do anything I want. It's kind of the American dream in a way. Uh, and then, uh, but he's led by one of the wisdom holders to, uh, to look up into the sky and to get in touch with, oh my God, you know, my, my dad is, is actually still alive and, he's, and he is even speaking to me. And Avatar, which is of all of them, the one that goes, it's so beautiful. The depictions are so amazing. Um, I see you, right? Is that there? I see you, which of course has this really deep meaning of where we're looking right at somebody in namaste, in the sacred. And we're, we're saying, I see you right, in the sacred. I see the divine in you. Um, and, and these other things that are throughout the movie uh, that she doesn't take sides, right? But it turns out uh, that uh, she ended up taking sides, which is life can do that, right? Just like during World War II, where you've got Roosevelt and Churchill there. <laughs> you know, she actually does end up taking sides, but often she doesn't. Uh, and these other movies that bring through these incredible uh, messages about uh, nurturing life. Ultimately, uh, the whole point of oneness is, is that, uh, that the divine is living in each one of us and in the earth itself, in animal life and people. And, uh, and that means that we've got to, that, that, that means that becomes now the, the most important thing, right? That as we focus on our priorities in life, that we're going to focus on that which is life-affirming, life-sustaining, and life-enhancing, right? That's all we can do in, in oneness is we understand that I'm actually, I'm a cell now in the body of life here on the earth. I'm here for just a split, you know, just, just an eyelash, boom. In the hundreds of millions of years of the evolution of the earth, I'm here for less than 100 years. So just, just, an eye, an eye opening and closing is all I'm here for. And so the question then becomes, we're, I'm on this challenged planet where there is, in fact, an existential crisis, and I'm, I'm a cell in the body of it. So, so what am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to live my life? Right? Um, and I can go off in Hakuna Batata, <laughs> or I can say, well, I'm just here for a little bit. And I'm going to be in service to it just as it's in service to us. And I know this is a part of your spiritual work, too, where you bring out this whole, these beautiful qualities of spirituality, where we understand that the divine has, has blessed us in the most amazing ways. That Before we were ever born, we had the opportunity to select uh, many of the features of life, the things that we would do, the places we would go, the obstacles, the, the challenges, the opportunities, the people that we'd be in relationship with. And then, boom, we, we parachute into life. Uh, and then while we're here, everything's working for us still, that where we're going within, in that inner process, where we are, we're, we're feeling into that grace and love and peace and that wisdom and that love. And then our, our dharma, we're feeling into that, and we're guided to the things that we are to do. Uh, and that uh, when we get off track and make mistakes, as we all do, that's fine. <laughs> we have GPS, right? Uh, <laughs> so... Boom, we're just brought right back on track. Again, we feel into it of, uh-oh, I took, you know, took a right turn, I should have taken a left turn. And we come right back on track. So uh, these beautiful movies uh, bring in these features of, 
of, of conscious evolution. And again, oneness, these uh, movie directors might not even uh, say what I'm saying, but what I believe in oneness, their creativity, their imagination, uh, that that actually there's the, the divine is right there with them. And in a sense, they were tapped on the shoulder to create these movies to advance conscious evolution. So this is all then coming to this whole uh, paradigm of, of oneness and, and these two different ways that we can live our lives in the world. One over here on the left, the Darwin survival of the fittest thing where uh, it's all about, you know, uh, creating treasure and, and uh, growing that treasure and kind of putting up a moat and saying, and, and sure, doing little things, uh, 1%, yeah, sure, you know, just uh, kind of sprinkling around uh, 1% or something, or even call it 5% or even 10%. But I'm still going to call it little things in today's world where, you know, 1% or 5% or 10% isn't necessarily going to do it. Uh, where there's an existential crisis, uh, there's, there's a lot more we can and should do. Um, but that that's left to each of our individual consciences to, to step into that. So we're by contrast in oneness, we are, you know, we're seeing that we're actually a cell. There's this diversity in unity, right? Where your gifts are, are completely different than mine and some other person's and some other person. So there's this incredible diversity in unity. And, but where we all are getting into our dharma, we know exactly what our station is, what our gift is and how we're going to contribute and how we're going to be in service. So you have this image here of a body that's that diversity and unity, where we're a healthy cell in the body, not a cancer cell. We're a healthy cell. So we're a red blood cell carrying oxygen, or we're an immune cell that's helping to protect the body, or some other kind of cell. But we, we're, we're healthy. We're focusing on that, which is life-affirming, life-sustaining, and life-enhancing. Okay, so this, of course, then just brings in the whole uh, social transformation model and sacred activism and the two important pieces. Um, it begins, of course, with the sacred. So this whole inner dimension where we're going within and we're uh, just, I know all of us, uh, all of you, and certainly in humanities team, this aspect of the inner sanctuary that, yes, there's still our brick, brick and mortar churches and chapels and things, but but the real uh, primary chapel or sanctuary is within. We're going within, and we're uh, and and as is said, if you don't go within, you go without. So it's important, and we have our spiritual practices that are, again, quite different: prayer and meditation, and walking in the woods, and so many other ways. Listening to music and watching movies. And there's so many ways that 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 where we just come into that deep connection and friendship, and I'll even call it communion state, with that with presence with the divine, with the one mind. We've got all these different names for it, but where we're filled up with this, with the grace and peace and blessing, where we come into a different being state, where we are in a different being state because of what we're doing in the sacred. And that then is overflowing. It's bridging over, connecting to the outer world where we're involved in this picture here is activism. I've actually got three slides, uh, but uh, the activism actually isn't, doesn't mean we have to go out and protest that some of us will. The activism is just bringing consciousness out into the world in this many different forms. Some of it is protest. Uh, you know, I think often in our world, it's, it's more affirming what is what is. Like Mother Teresa said, I'll march for peace. I won't march against war. Uh, or it could be charitable good works. And I know you all are involved in a lot of charitable good works. Or uh, as uh, Olivia mentioned, I came from uh, Silicon Valley. It could be just bringing consciousness into critical parts of, uh, of, of the spheres of life. So starting a conscious business, uh, bringing consciousness to schools, uh, bringing consciousness through hospice and other features into uh, medical care. And I could go on and on. Uh, Marianne Williams, bringing consciousness into politics, where she's saying it came in, yoga brought in consciousness, medical care is bringing in consciousness, and uh, but guess what? Nobody's bringing consciousness into politics. I'm going to bring consciousness into politics. And there she is, you know, brave Marianne, just uh, on stage with all of these people that couldn't give a darn about consciousness. But she knows it's important to, uh, to share. So, and of course, um, where we don't have these two in balance, um, there's trouble, right? So if it's just the sacred and there's no activism, there's no doing component, it's just meditating in a cave, uh, that uh, 
we're, we're, almost always we'll find that's not our dharma and we're going to feel unfulfilled. Uh, and then where it's just activism, uh, my aunt here in Boulder, Colorado, is, uh, is, uh, doesn't believe in, in a god or, you know, or, or, uh, or afterlife. Uh, so it's, it's, she's a big activist, though. And where it's just activism, we can burn out because we don't have, we're not fed by that inner, by the divine uh, strength. We're not even recognizing that it's there and that it's bringing uh, wisdom and support so many things in the TPF features and other features. We're not even aware that it's there. So either of these alone uh, isn't going to accomplish much. So the key then is, is, uh, is really finding balance here. Um, and, uh, and, and I, for me, and I'm, I'm going to guess for you all too, um, it's actually pretty natural where we find balance. We just, through our spiritual practices, we stay really strong here on the left side, uh, the inner, and there's this natural flow over to the outer where we're finding our, through our Dharma, we, we know what our station in life is. We, we know what our mission is. It's not to, we, we're, we're not going to try and do a hundred things, right? Uh, but there's one. Uh, so, and there's splinters off of that. The big one for me is humanities team, but, but there's splinters off of that to where we're doing uh, things with the homeless causes here in Boulder and actually all over the world. Uh, and with that re- retraining to help people get jobs and things like that. Uh, but our Dharma will lead us straight to the thing that we're to do. So we've got a beautiful balance. So, and then this is, uh, this is kind of, you know, a beautiful picture where in the center is this whole light. And this is, I know we were talking actually just before uh, I came on about uh, the Christ, with, you know, we can talk about Christ in you, right? The Christ that lives within us where we're in that deep uh, divine state of service and uh, where we're in connection with, with Christ and with, with the divine and where there's a communion state going on and where we, we are giving our whole lives to the body of life, of the earth, of humanity, of cosmos, um, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's illustrated here in, uh, in this heart picture which then is flowing over into these outer world activities. And these are philanthropic activities that you can see. And many of us are involved in philanthropic activities, but just as powerfully and just as importantly, it's flowing over into all of the spheres of life. What's happening with Marianne and politics, uh, these conscious businesses that are starting all over the world, uh, consciousness that's coming into all of the other spheres of life. Uh, in uh, you may know education, there's a guy named Dr. Bill Spady, uh, spirituality, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm just throwing out one name. I could give you 10 or 20 or 50, right? But I'm just going to give you one. Uh, and then in relationships, Gay and Katie Hendricks and in arts, Ricky Byers Beckwith and a media, a lot that are bringing out the new news that's positive. And I've already mentioned Marianne Williamson in politics and in healthcare, Dr. Larry Dossi. And I could keep going on, but uh, just where we're being the change, where there's lots of really wonderful, beautiful, important communion state inner work going on that's then bridging over to this important outer world work. So now I'm going to just take you through our programs here uh, briefly and just do a quick time check here. So I guess I'm doing okay on time. And uh, I've got until what time again? 1.15? One? About one? Or one tip? Okay, okay, we have you until your time, one fifteen. but we want to leave maybe 15 minutes at the end to have some dialogue between you and the group. Okay, so how much time, how much more time should I talk? Okay, until one fifteen. so it's about 11.54, well, another, another uh, six, seven minutes? Okay, six or seven minutes. Okay, yep. good. Let me just kind of speed through some stuff here then. Okay, Global Oneness Day, I want to take you through our programs real quick. Um, Global Oneness Day was preceded by the Oneness Declaration. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm actually not going to read it. Uh, I'll just read maybe the beginnings of these. So the first uh, uh, declaration, the message, we are all one, interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent with God, life, one, another, is the one spiritual message that the world has been waiting for to bring about loving and sustainable answers to humanity's challenges. So uh, there are, you'll see... Uh, uh, nine of these provisions. We, we created this declaration in 2007. We circulated it. 52,000 people signed it worldwide. We brought it to uh, 
the United Nations. Here we are, May 20, 2010. Global Council, you can see Ambassador Chowdhury, you can see standing there. You can see he's got a pamphlet. Uh, that's the petition. We brought the uh, package, the declaration, signed by 52,000 people. That's our Global Council. Uh, all of them uh, on their own flew in for this meeting. We presented uh, Ambassador Chowdhury, who received us with the declaration. We asked the United Nations to create a global one mistake. We, we did not plan to create a global one mistake. Ambassador Chowdhury turned the whole thing around and said, there are 196 countries here. Uh, we can't, uh, we, we, it take us too long to create a global one this day. You create a global one this day. And this is what he uh, said during his speech. He said, you can see him presenting to us. I believe that unless we have the sense of solidarity among the peoples of the world, all of our efforts for peace and security will go nowhere. Will go nowhere. So he said, we have to have a global one this day, uh, but you created. Uh, so we had no plans to create it, but we did. And we uh, celebrated our first Global Oneness Day in uh, October. It's actually on United Nations Day, October 24, 2010. We had about, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about it here. Uh, I want to just uh, show you these uh, slides. We also give a Spiritual Leadership Award, Desmond Tutu, here in 2009. That's our Global Council again. We all flew in to Pretoria, South Africa. And, of course, Ubuntu is oneness. It's a beautiful African lineage uh, basis for oneness. And Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela both created it. Uh, this is a posthumous award we gave to Nelson uh, Mandela years later. Uh, the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation is there uh, with his friends and things. Uh, and what they did uh, with Ubuntu, putting a spotlight on Ubuntu, and also all of the outer world things where they uh, talk about the repression of dissent and crackdown on protest and attacks on human rights and emerging regressive laws and media freedom, political repression, armed conflict, on and on. Uh, as you know, those two men were incredibly brave. Desmond Tutu is still alive today. Uh, he's older, though, and his uh, foundation's down in Cape Town, South Africa. Then this is our spiritual leadership award for, it says Michael Beckwith. Uh, it's actually for Ricky and Michael. You can see Ricky right there. Uh, to the right on or on the left of Michael Beckwith. And uh, Ricky's a great artist that brings all the spiritual expression through in the most beautiful way. And Michael Beckwith is a one of a kind with agape and where he's in the media. Often the media wants to do a religion versus spirituality thing and they usually choose Michael to come in and speak. Uh, this is, again is our global council. We all flew into Colorado to present this. So here's Global Oneness Day. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, for those of you that haven't seen um, Global One this day, this is the 2018 program to give you a sense for what we're doing. We call it our Earth Day for an Awakened Humanity. And uh, you can see Divine Presence panel here with Thomas Hubel, Marianne Williamson, and Joan Borisinko, uh, The Power of Evolving the Self with Barbara Marks Hubbard, uh, Leaders in Integral Framework, Craig Hamilton, Steve McIntosh, Terry Patton, uh, Oneness Meditation with Gangaji, Final Frontier with Neil Donald Walsh, Transformation Through Science with Greg Ray and Bruce Lipton, Deborah Rosman and Howard Martin, um, Spirituality and Oneness with Patricia Cota Robles, Matthew Fox, Mary Morrissey, Bernie Siegel. So amazing. These are all people that give freely of their time. None of us charge us anything. It's pro bono. Uh, they come in, uh, they do it, they promote it with us. This is how Global Oneness Day went from 1,000 people back in 2010 to now over 100,000 people either watch it live or through archive. Hopefully uh, you've, you've heard of it also. And we created the Conscious Business Declaration then. Um, this was in 2015. You can see the four organizations uh, down below that created it. The Goy Peace Foundation in Japan, the Club of Budapest in Europe, Case Western Reserve University in Ohio here in the U.S., and Humanities Team. Uh, and... Uh, Ken Wilbur helped us write the preface here. As a global community of business leaders, we are committed to developing the awareness and the skills. That was, that was Ken. The awareness and the skills, so waking up and growing up, needed to evolve consciously our organizations in alignment with these principles. I won't read all of these, uh, but this, again, is for the business community, so it's pretty radical. We are one with humanity and all of life. Business and all institutions of the human community are integral parts of a single reality, interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. And these other provisions all flow from that. 
We spent uh, over a year creating this little declaration, but the reason that we did, because there are B Corps and conscious capitalism and so on, is in these earlier versions, which we call wave one, wave two, we call this wave three. In wave three, we're bringing in the fullness now of connection, of oneness, of consciousness. Uh, so, that, so that organizations that have cultures based on this are uh, the, the collaboration and the decision-making is deeply informed by consciousness. So that's why we spent so much time creating this declaration. Uh, and this is just a, a picture of the, there were five of us that worked together to create the declaration. Um, so, and I'll wrap up with this. Uh, back in, uh, we used to just do free interviews with uh, people all over the world. Uh, again, we're a nonprofit. Uh, and then beginning about 2016, it was interesting. The people said they didn't want to just do hour-long free interviews anymore. Uh, they did not want to do that anymore. We've been doing that since our founding. And what they said they wanted were, were, were courses, programs that are, st I'll call it sticky, that uh, give people the skills to really fully understand all of these different features of what oneness and spiritual and mystical living is and how to really live them in an empowered way. So we want courses, we don't want free interviews. So we began to shift over uh, and now we're a transformational education program. We're the one nonprofit that is uh, in the space as you, you're, I'm sure familiar with Mind Valley, Sounds True, uh, Shift Network and Evolving Wisdom. We're, we're, the, we're the one that's a nonprofit, we're the smaller one. Uh, but we're growing quite rapidly here uh, because we're not focused, we're, we're not a for-profit. So we're not focused on just things, you know, bending reality and, and abundance blocks and things. Uh, those can be embedded uh, smaller teachings. But in the overall, what we're focused on is in this generation uh, manifesting this planetary awakening in all spheres of life. So, and that's a big job, which includes lots of different forms of education, these are some of the initial leaders that have come in to uh, be instructors. Barbara Marks Hubbard at three, uh, which is all about raising consciousness. She used her 52 codes book. Neil Donald Walsh spent uh, three months creating our final frontier. Um, it was like writing a book, he said. Uh, and then Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, and HeartMath created the science of self-empowerment. It's called Cellular Consciousness. That's Bruce Lipton. Heart Intelligence. That's Howard Martin and Deborah Rosman, HeartMath leaders and the untold human story, that's Greg Braden. Uh, incredibly powerful, where they came in in the first person and talked about their science and how they're living their science to become really empowered in, in divine presence. You probably know uh, Greg, Bruce, and HeartMath are not afraid to talk about spiritual, you know, about, about the divine in you. They're not afraid to talk about that. Um, I created my own program on conscious leadership that's all about how we uh, how the, the divine is in service to us. And when, when we come say, I'm in service to you or surrender, whatever term we want to use, then the tornado starts where there's this, where, where we're in service to life itself. And it's that pure agenda. And that's when the miracles and blessings come in. And we can, it's like, that's, we call humanity's team a God job because we're just focused on the big agenda, no little agendas. And so the things that happen that support us, and the organization, you know, aren't even really believable in many cases. So we just talk about that process of really being conscious leaders that support us and our families and our work. And then conscious business change agent, which is all based on that conscious business declaration, where we're actually training people and providing them with the tools to transform an unconscious business to a conscious business or to start a, a conscious business, to give you all the tools to start a conscious business. So that's really, uh, I'll just wrap on that. These are just pictures, graphics of these uh, transformational education programs that we've developed here in the recent years. And there's a whole bunch of them in the pipeline now. So thank you. Right. You can hear me now, this is Sheldon. Um, yes. You said, okay, so we would like, if you can, just to say brief journey from Silicon Valley to to Oregon in 2003. Just kind of what led you in that in that journey, and then we will get a chance for people to ask some questions from the from the rest of the audience. Yeah. Well, briefly, um, what it was for me was I was incredibly blessed. I, I grew up uh, with a single mom. 
uh, there were seven siblings, um, and we, so we, you know, I paid for my uh, own braces when I was in the sixth grade. I, I grew up, my mother was a legal secretary. Uh, and then I just, I ended up being in the right place at the right time uh, in finance and then in IBM. And then I left IBM and then I started two companies. I took two companies to from zero with just used furniture and an executive suite to 75 million in revenue, uh, two of them. One of them, it took 10 years, another one, two years. But during that process, I became uh, familiar with this, with this, these, this wisdom that we're actually one that, that I myself and you and everybody is an emanation of the divine, and I I sat with that to decide who am I and who am I in service to for the rest of my life. Am I who I thought I was, the American dream guy, that's uh, really going for it here and building uh, quarter over quarter revenue growth and a, a serial entrepreneur? Uh, is that who I am? Uh, or am I an emanation of the divine, um, eternal, with these uh, unlimited capacities, and I'm here just for the blink of an eye uh, on this planet during its hundreds of millions of years of evolution, and I happen to be here right at the decision point moment between evolution and devolution. Uh, who am I? Uh, and I decided I'm, I'm the second one. I'm not the first one. And so when I decided that, I lost all my passion for business. I sold everything. I left the Young Presidents Organization. I moved to Boulder. My whole life completely changed. I lost almost all of my friends because my friends really didn't understand the decision I was making. But I've come into these incredible new prosperities of what this work is and uh, that, that nurtures me and my family uh, and that has, has grown humanity's team to what it is. And I'm a much richer person today than I was then. Marvelous story, Steve. Wish we had more time to, to go into it. But I want to give a chance now for anybody, questions from people here in the group, anything you would like to be asking of Steve? Hi, my name is Frances Harriman, and I live in a small town. Um, definitely benefit from some uh, of that creative business agent training and you had it on the last slide and it went fleetingly by and it looks like it was a six month course. Would you uh, say something more about how a few people, if I could gather a few people or interest them in um, a creative business change agency uh, to develop businesses in a small town, what would be the simplest process and what would be the six, what does the six month refer to? Thank you. Yes, you bet. Well, there, there are two programs that, um, that can help. The one with the one you're referencing, the six-month conscious business change agent. And there are many leaders that uh, Ken Wilber and Michael Beckwith and, and many other names that you might not know, uh, but that are real, uh, beautiful, powerful leaders, but they're just not as well known, are faculty in that program. And uh, what we're doing now with that is we're making it an evergreen so people can take it any time during the year. Uh, we probably won't have that done until probably the fall of this year. I'll say September or October. But once it's uh, once it is done, then from humanities team or we and we work with partners all over the world, partner organizations with email lists and social media. You'll be able to go in and uh, take that program, and we can get the cost way down uh, where we create the evergreen program like that versus the live program with six months of coordination with all the instructors that are involved. There's also the Conscious Leadership Program, which is uh, it's an eight-week program, so it's shorter, and it's getting into um, a lot of the same things, but more coming from the leadership direction of just how we really live it fully, and we're bringing in that uh, the power of the divine one mind to just drive and lift the organization and the people that are involved and keep it pure, focused on uh, on doing these good works of life affirming, life sustaining, and life enhancing. So uh, you might want to look at both of those. Uh, the, the conscious leadership one will offer right after Global Oneness Day. Uh, it's going to start in uh, uh, end of October, early November, and it'll go another eight weeks. And it's we we price these at uh, 297, so call it 300, um, and we price them pretty low. Again, we're a nonprofit; we don't have any investors, so. What we're doing is we're our whole thing is getting these programs out in the world and then creating a little bit of prosperity to uh, support the organization. Thank you, Steve. Other, other, yes, please come up. Hi, Steve. This is Ginny Ross. I live in Maui, but I'll be in Boulder next week. 
Um, I just want to congratulate you for your extraordinary outreach. I think it's spectacular that so many people can benefit from these programs online. And I was just wondering if you might be considering in the future offering something a little bit more esoteric, something like the uh, Seven Rays philosophy, um, the psychology of the soul, and perhaps even some astrology or things like that. Yeah, Thank I would you. love to. Um, where you have ideas like that, uh, you could float them maybe through Olivia and I are together and, and also this other group called Evolutionary Leaders. Uh, if you have ideas, uh, float them. I would, I would love to see them and understand them. We are bringing in uh, these, you could even see in this presentation, you know, the esoteric, but I think you're bringing in their deeper topics here, the things that we can go uh, into that are really uh, a much fuller discussion. I think that's that's what you're suggesting. And yeah, I would I would love to see um, what that might look like uh, and what its possibility is. Right now, we're, uh, as I mentioned, we're the smaller transformational education program. These other ones are big organizations and they're putting out programs every week. We put out a program about every two months. So we've got to make sure that there's uh, a pretty substantial following uh, when we bring our program to market. Once we get bigger and we've got more programs out there, we'll be we'll have more license to uh, to just offer uh, other kinds of valuable programs that don't necessarily need large following. So that's just one of the considerations there. Yes, come on, David. Hi, Steve. This is uh, David Hopper. Um, I've been listening to your uh, broadcast for quite a number of years, on uh, particularly on business leadership. Um, I'm I have an interest in, um, let's just say, uh, what we call the seed groups here, and it basically involves the politicians, the educators, the scientists, and the um, healthcare workers, et cetera, and, and how they collaborate uh, and bring in the higher thought forms of what society can become. And I was wondering, with your evolutionary leaders, um, they collaborate and work together, and even with your faculty, is there a possibility that these people can come together with some type of collaboration with people of industries, with government, politicians, and put out some type of presentation where the public can interact with that too? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, David, absolutely. Um, and one is just the, the things you have in mind, you might make sure Olivia understands, because again, uh, she and I you get a chance to collaborate. We've got a big meeting actually coming up here soon in Colorado. Uh, but as well, there are other organ. There are a lot of organizations that are being spawned right now. It's part of why we can say this whole planetary shift is it's on track. It's going. You know, the, the press is not covering it, but there's a lot of really good things happening. Um, let me give you an example. Um, within evolutionary leaders, we've got something called a conscious business synergy circle. So, and we've invited people that aren't part of evolutionary leaders to come in and be part of those programs. We've been meeting about once a month. Well, there's another group that just surfaced. I got an email just in the last couple of days called Conscious Leadership Guild. Uh, and, and they've got 60 people already. And Paul Pullman is one of the members who was, he was the CEO of Unilever, which is the big conscious uh, organization based out of Europe. Uh, he recently left. He's not the CEO any longer, but he's one of the members of the uh, Conscious Leadership Guild. And they asked me if I would want to be involved. And I said, sure, I'd love to be involved which is like what you're talking about, where you've got business leaders, you've got nonprofit NGOs, uh, academics, uh, all coming together for the common good. So uh, yes, yes, uh, there are groups like this. And uh, because just like you all, you know, there's, there's a lot of us that are totally committed to this planetary awakening, uh, that it, it's, it's, it, we feel like we've embodied to be here to do this. Steve, this has been really terrific, and I'm just say, by the way, that um, <clears throat> Ronaldo may be part of this 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 guild. I'm not sure he may talk about it tomorrow too. So we have a between you and Ronaldo, perhaps we'll see what's going on on a larger scale. Time for one more brief question and response. Anybody else want to? And Ronaldo, let me say, is he's yeah. he's fabulous. You're good. <laughs> he's a he's a great speaker, but he's doing great great work out in the world. Uh, and he's pushing, he'll tell you, I'm sure, uh, that uh, 
with Sam's Club and uh, some of these big uh, retail stores, he's in there actually influencing the uh, uh, wages that they're paying their employees. These big, huge manufacturing companies are, are listen to Ronaldo and uh, some of his peers that are in uh, talking about creating uh, that which is life sustaining and life of life affirming, life enhancing. Uh, so it's one of the areas where work needs to be done, getting better wages into some of these organizations. And he's also, um, he, he makes, he'll talk about the existential crisis and he does with business leaders. Because we've got a, you know, we're at a decision point moment and we're asking you, inviting you to come in and to participate. He's got a lot of courage. Steve, thank you so much for your presence with us, all the work you're doing in the world. And um, we're going to move on to another aspect of our, of our conference, but thank you and blessings. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me with you. Appreciate it. You know, and Godspeed to you all. And uh, again, uh, wow, for 33 years, that's really, that is really, really <laughs> awesome. Keep up the great work. We, we, we hang in here. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank all right, have, a, have a great weekend.